Tides and waves, pools and eddies, trout are rising for the naked eye. And the sun is shining down on the belly, hope to be for life until the day that I die. Some folks like horses, cats or dogs, me I like fishing with a rod and a fly. Yes, fishing is a favorite pastime of mine. If I couldn't do it, I think I would cry. Well, life is good when I'm waiting in the river. It gets even better when I test to fly. If I get a trout, it don't really matter. It's fun just to be here and give it a try. Thought out the long bitter winter, the water is clear and the skies are blue. I'm standing in the middle of the Delaware River, might even catch and release one or two. Stone flies and pass, and the ripples are plenty. Mayflies courting on fragrant breeze. Wax wings come down from the heavens and wait for their dinner up in the pine trees. A trout is rising in the far eddy. I make a false cast, then take my aim. If he takes the fly, I feel so much better. And if he doesn't, I'll feel no shame. Hey folks, how you doing today? Kurt Nelson here for Riffles and Waves. I'm right here on the Willow Weemock Creek just above the museum bridge there. That's the Catskill Fly Fishing Museum bridge is on the other side. And this is the same place that they filmed some of the footage for the TU TV show when they were here. And uh, it's kind of a hot, sunny, bright day, clear day and the fishing's been really tough, not just for me, for everyone. Uh, I did manage to catch a really nice, um, big, fat, over 14 inch brown trout down in Roscoe there in a real nice hole. And I was using a giant uh, stonefly nymph. The fish came up and uh, he hit it four times, and the fourth time I was able to catch him and a real real nice surprise I thought I was gonna go fishless today which sometimes happens you can you can see it's really early yet uh, we're, we're getting good caddis off the water and uh, some Hendrickson's here and there and I saw some red quills earlier but uh, very few rises I think I've only seen one rise all day long there goes a Hendrickson and uh, go flying by well um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cast a little while right here using my stonefly nymph and let's see if we can't hook something up here and uh, I'll probably be talking a little bit about uh, uh, using a stonefly. Uh, usually with a stonefly I'll cast up and across and let it float to the bottom or as deep as it can and uh, as it goes downstream I'm going to lift the rod and that 
when you start moving that fly is a lot, quite often when they hit. So uh, we're going to see what happens here. So I'm going to stay right in this area here. Hopefully I'm in view of the camera and I'm going to try to catch a nice trout here. And again, I'm using a giant stonefly nymph and I'm going to wade down here. I don't want to get out too far because that's I want to fish this water right in front of me first. See if I can't get anything right there. When it gets to the bottom, you're going to lift it slowly and it's going to drag a little bit and then you're going to cast again. And you're just going to keep working all the water directly in front of you. And you make another cast and you just keep working that water. And with, with no rises or bites, then you would probably move downstream a little further. But it is a gorgeous day here today on the Willow Weemont Creek in the Catskills of New York. And boy, that, that brookie I caught was just so fat. I took a picture of him and I'll, I'll try to put a picture in the clip here. I'm going to cast way across now let that drag. I'm going to mend a little line upstream with that and let it go down and then it starts dragging and then I'm going to lift it up again. Cast upstream and across. Keep that line kind of tight. As it goes by I can mend a little bit and get a longer float right down through there just by mending a little line out. Even with a nymph I do that. Usually you do that with a dry fly. I like doing that with a wet fly or a nymph. It gives you a little more flow. Now we got quite a breeze blowing here today. And it's coming downstream, which is the direction I like it usually. Mend a little line out. And see what happens there. Nothing. So let's move down a little bit. move down and go out a little bit now. Try to get over to the other side a little more. You cast with that 1 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Right there I should have had a hit. It's a little eddy right there. Not a huge one, but just enough to uh, hold some fish going to do a reach cast so the line is above the nymph. Keeps the nymph facing upstream. There's a big rock right there. Should be a trout right in front of that big rock. So I'm going to cast downstream and let that fly swing right in front of that rock. right in front of it. Nope. No bites there. Maybe there's no fish in this stream. No, I know they're there. I think there's, I think we're due for a big caddis hatch and what they've been feeding on is caddis fly nymphs and they're gorging themselves right now and Probably this evening there's going to be a huge caddis hatch. And I'd love to get that on tape and show you a, a humongous caddis hatch and how, how beautiful it is to see them bugs coming off the water like that. And I apologize for turning my back to you, but I'm fishing just downstream from me. And now I'm casting down and across because I'm trying to target one particular spot which is that rock. I know there's a fish in front of that rock or just to the side of it. So I'm going to let that fly swing right in front of it. And I was hoping he'd take it. But that's a stone fly. That's how you catch the old stone fly nymph. And it's a very effective fly. And because I would have I wouldn't have had any fish today hadn't I 
put this fly on earlier and caught that 14 inch brown. upstream somewhere. Got a nice little riffle here. Uh, it's at the head of a long run that goes down to the museum. And I'm just gonna put that fly right in there and let it sink and float down through. Then when it gets to the end, lift it and then cast it again. Very simple to do, very easy fly to fish, very effective fly. And they usually will hit it without delay if they want it, they want it. They don't, they aren't gonna fart around with this one. They're gonna either take the fly or they're not. So it's a very effective fly, however not right now. But anyway, that's your giant stone fly and I'm, I'm, I'd like to catch a fish here. I, I always, uh, one thing I like to tell people about when you're casting and uh, I cast as if I expect to catch a fish every cast. Okay? I, when I cast, I, I'm expecting to catch a fish. And I'm surprised when I don't catch a fish. Uh, a lot of beginners will cast and not expect to catch a fish and be surprised if they do. And I like to be, have it the other way around. I like to actually be expecting to catch a fish and that way I'm a more effective fisherman. I have a greater chance of success because I'm always thinking positive about catching a fish and that I'm casting to the right location with the right fly and it's it's kind of middle of the May and it's we had some big storms last week, and right today is just absolutely gorgeous. Not a cloud in the sky. Uh, there's been some cedar wax wings and purple martins flying around, and barn swallows or whatever they are um, feeding on some of the bugs. We've been having a nice steady caddis hash all day long, and I've seen some Hendricksons, and I've seen some. Uh, um, I've seen some Hendrickson's. And uh, I was using a red quill earlier. There's some big red mayflies out. Uh, I don't know which ones they were. I couldn't catch one. It doesn't really matter. All you have to know is a red bug is a red bug and a yellow bug is a yellow bug. And if you put the right bug on, you know, red, yellow, purple, whatever, you have a greater chance of success for catching a trout. Now, I'm using a stonefly because things are kind of slow and I know the fish are feeding on the bottom and um, this is a good big heavy fly and it's one of those, it's a big fly so they aren't likely to miss it. If they're feeding, they're going to hit it because it's a, a big piece of food compared to a little teeny nymph of something else. This is one of my favorite little runs here. In fact, I've used this giant stonefly several times here every every year and I've caught some nice fish here. But today it looks like it might be different. But again, I, I'm expecting, oh, there goes a big Hendrickson downstream. Um, the Hendrickson's are a good size fly. 
And uh, again, if they're if they're hatching sporadically throughout the day, it kind of gives you the idea that uh, perhaps they're, uh, there's a lot of food underneath, and that's what the trout are feeding on. I haven't seen any rises at all. I think I saw one this morning. One rise, and there's a lot of food on the surface. So that's, that's kind of a, a bad sign for fishing dry flies uh, because it's telling you they're feeding underneath. And uh, uh, you got to go down. You got to go underneath. But anyway, I'm expecting a good hatch tonight of something later in the evening. The sun's got a few more hours. It's about four o'clock. It's a real hot day. Bright sunshine. The trout don't like that bright sunshine, so they tend to shy away from the surface unless there's a lot of food. There really hasn't been that much food, so I, I suspect the trout are kind of hanging low and deep and uh, waiting for the, the, the sun to start going down. And I'm hoping that when they do that, the bugs are going to pick up too. And the water level here is pretty low, okay? I'm pretty surprised at how low it is. We just had some big storms last week, and I thought it would pick it up a little bit more but it's it's pretty weightable I mean I can wait across just about anywhere I've come here before and upstream it was, it was over my waist and it had strong current so there's no way you're gonna wait across but again I'm using the stone fly and I think what I'll do is I'll head upstream and see what we can't find upstream in the next hole this hole gets it's a lot of people. I'm probably the 30th person who's stood here and casted today. So these fish in this little pool here see a lot of fishermen. Like I said, the Catskill Fly Fishing Museum is just downstream. And uh, I think I'm going to pack up and, uh, and go upstream. So uh, let's go see what we can find somewhere else. Hey folks, I just wanted to also let you know that um, I've only got a couple shows left this year. And what I'd like to do over the summer is get as many of my viewers as I can on TV for next year. So if you're going fishing, contact me at avkurt at mac.com and I'll try to get hold of you. And we'll schedule a time where we can go fishing together. And what I'll do is if you're going fishing somewhere, I'll meet you there or, or whatever and uh, I'll videotape your excursion and you know we'll put you on the air. I want to get as many kids as I can out there fishing with their mom and dad or whoever, their uncles or whatever, uh, on the show. So uh, I'd like the show to be your show, okay? And not just me uh, fishing and do having a good time. I want you to be on the show. So contact me at avkurt at mac.com and we'll put you on the show. All right? So we'll see you next year. And keep on fishing, will ya? Hey folks, how you doing? Kurt Nelson here for Riffles and Waves. I'm out at Hudson Ingle Park and you may be wondering what the heck I'm doing out here. Well, what I'd like to tell you about is a program I'm going to be running here through the month of June. That's five Mondays in June at nine o'clock in the morning. I will meet here by the garden area. It's kind of noisy out here by the highway, but we will meet out here and we will use this grassy area and we'll throw frisbees out and we'll practice casting with targets. And this is very good practice uh, before you go to a stream. You really do not want to go fishing on a stream with, uh, without good casting ability. There's uh, uh, several things you need to know about fly fishing. One is, is you need to know something about trout. You need to know something about the stream itself. 
uh, the ecology of the stream and biology of it. Uh, you also need to know something about fish. Okay, what do they do? Where do they live? Where do they eat? What are their things do they need? And you also need to keep in mind is uh, how much oxygen is there in the stream? What what kind of stream is it? Uh, is there cover? Uh, is there oxygen? Is the cold water cold? Those are things trout need. Now um, I don't want to get too caught up in just talking about trout all the time but uh, we have beautiful rivers right here. We have the Susquehanna River, we have the Shenango River. There's musky and pickerel, smallmouth bass, carp are a, a wonderful thing to, to try to catch, very difficult to catch. In fact probably more difficult than any fish species I know of. I've been trying for years and I can't seem to get a carp to take my fly. They do take flies. I've seen people catch carp many times and I, I just couldn't figure out how, how they got it to bite so easy. But carp are a, a real big heavy fish and they don't give up. Uh, you could fight a carp for uh, half an hour or more if it's a good size one. They just seem to uh, keep their energy. So don't think that you just have to have a fly rod and go trout fishing. By no means. That, that um, what you can do is you can wade right out into the Susquehanna River when the water levels drop and you can cast a dry fly or a nymph and catch any number of species. So get out there and give that a try. But also um, I would, I'd like to talk more about my program here. What we're going to be doing is called uh, grass casting. Um, and you can know a lot about the stream and all those other things I just mentioned. Uh, trout and habitat and blah 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 blah. And uh, what, what, it's all worthless unless you know how to cast. If you can't cast and get a drag free float, um, oh I got a big one. If you can't cast and, and maintain that drag free float, you're going to be in trouble on the stream because you're, you're not going to catch a lot of fish. You're going to get frustrated and you're going to have a lot of problems. So um, what I'm going to be talking about during the casting practice is not just your basic cast, but techniques for uh, maintaining a drag free float. The reach cast, the sine wave cast, uh, the check cast, which gives you a little sine waves. Um, those kinds of things is, uh, is what we'll be working on, okay? And we'll also be covering knots. Uh, how do you tie your dry fly line or your, your fly line to the backing that's on the reel, okay? Now, in the, one of my first shows, I actually showed the knots and I did all that stuff. But this is your chance to really come out and see how it's done firsthand. Um, I'll be out here every Monday in June from 9 to 11 in the morning, okay? And it's called Grass Casting at Otsuninga Park. Just, it's free. There's no cost to it. I've got a permit with the, the park uh, Parks Department here. and. Uh, they're letting me use this space and uh, it's a basically a community service I want to give back to the community and I want to get folks out there fly fishing on these on these rivers these local rivers uh, you don't have to drive to the beaver kill you don't have to go to the uh, Willow Weemock or the Delaware or all Sable rivers those are places I go to uh, when I have the time and and the gas money okay but there's a lot of fishing to be had right here from Otsuninga Park. Uh, once the water level drops down to where it's uh, easily weightable, there's fall fish out here in August that take a fly almost every cast. You'll, you'll catch a 15 to 18 inch fall fish out here from the park um, every cast with, with a dry fly. And it's just a lot of fun fishing in the late season, in the fall. Uh, fall fish are like a whitefish type tucker thing and uh, they're a lot of fun they take flies right off the surface and once in a while you may catch a nice smallmouth out here so uh, keep that in mind uh, the park has a lot to offer right here by the Shenango River and uh, don't forget the, uh, one of my favorite pastimes is I go to Sandy Beach and kayak or canoe upstream and I take a fly rod with me and I fish for smallmouth bass uh, once the season opens up, uh, one of these Saturdays in June, I'm not sure which one right now, but uh, 
bass season is getting close. Uh, bass are a riot uh, on a on a fly dry fly rod. If you catch a nice nice smallmouth about 12 inches, you're in for a good fight. Um, they'll take you all over the place. I've had fish take my backing out um, of that size, and that's just a, a a smallmouth. They're they're not even a small smallmouth will take your line out um, compared to a trout. Um, and uh, some folks have asked me how come I don't have a lot of shots of fish. Well, uh, I have to apologize for that because every time I've gone fishing with my camera, uh, it's been a bad day. Okay. rock and broke the line off. So yeah, I do catch fish, uh, but a lot of times the fish are really biting good when it's raining out, and I don't take my camera out in the rain. Uh, it's a low budget operation I got here, and I can't afford to just go out and buy a new camera because I, I wanted a shot of uh, a fish in, in a downpour. So um, I apologize. I'd like to get more fish on on the show, and that's where I, I ask you. I'd like you to contact me at avkurt at mac.com and I will get, get hold of you and you tell me where you're going to be fishing this summer and I'll try to hook up with you. I'll bring my camera out and we'll get some video of you fishing. Um, it's not, I don't want this show to be just me uh, catching trout or bass or whatever. I want this show to be you catching bass, okay? I want you to show me how to fish uh, or how you fish and I want to pass that information on to our viewers. That's what it's all about, sharing information and love about the rivers and fly fishing and fishing in general. Uh, you don't have to be a fly fisherman, okay? Um, that's just the way I fish, okay? And that's, that's what I like to do. But if you like to spin, spin fish or bait fish or whatever you do, um, just do so in accordance with the laws. There's some places where you aren't allowed to take bait, so be careful of that. And always obey the regulations and always be safe. Um, stay, don't wade too deep in fast current. Uh, in fact, don't, don't go over your, uh, your, your waist or your hips uh, in fast current. There's just too much force there and, it, and it, you can get in trouble. Not only lose your equipment, but uh, you can get seriously hurt. So always keep that in mind. Be safe, have fun, and learn something. And if you want to learn something about casting, come on out here to Hudson Ingle Park every Monday in June from 9 to 11. And we'll see you next week. Hey Trump, he's rising in the bar eddy. Make a false cast, then take my he takes the fly, I feel so much better, and if he does, I'll feel no shame. Water is cold. Every stream. I'll bear it all, just a fish with a feather. So when I sleep, I will have a sweet dream. Life is good when I'm wading a river. It gets even better when I cast a fly. If I catch a trout, it don't really matter. It's fun just to be here and give it a try. Pools and waves, pools and eddies, trout are rising for the dry fly. And the sun is shining down on a valley, hope to be fly fishing till the day that I die. Yes, I hope to be fly fishing till the day that I die.